This problem says the following. A material containing cracks of initial length 0.01 millimeters is subjected to alternating tensile stresses of 25 megapascals and 125 megapascals. It does this for 350,000 cycles. It then says, the material is then subjected to alternating tensile and compressive stresses of 250 megapascals. How many of the larger stress amplitude cycles can be sustained before failure? And then we're listed a series of materials properties and crack growth constants which we'll need to use for this problem. So what's the general strategy for solving a problem like this? Well, we essentially know that we're going to have to apply the crack growth equation two times because we're given two different uh, alternating stress states. The first state goes from 25 megapascals to 125 megapascals reversibly, and it does this for 350,000 cycles. So we know during this time it is going to start at an initial crack length of 0.01 millimeters and it's going to grow to some larger crack size. Let's just call it AF for the crack size final after this first cycle. Then we're going to go from negative 250 megapascals reversibly to positive 250 megapascals, so cycling between tension and compression, 250 megapascals. And the question is asking us how many of these cycles, right, n sub f, that's the number of cycles until failure at this one. So before we can answer that question, we're going to need to know how uh, big our crack is going to get. It's going to start at AF from the problem before, and it needs to grow until it reaches AC, the critical crack length. The way that we're going to solve for the critical crack length is by using the fracture toughness. K1C equals Y multiplied by our sigma multiplied by the square root of pi times the critical crack length. Right? So by solving for critical crack length, we can plug that into our crack growth equation and finally solve for the number of cycles till failure. So let's dive in. Questions like this all use the crack growth equation. It starts out with the form dA dN, or the change in crack length with respect to the number of cycles, is equal to capital A multiplied by the range in the stress intensity factor, meaning what's it ranging between as, as its alternating stress state, and then this is raised to a crack growth exponent, which we're going to call n. Let's go ahead and separate our variables so that we have the following. We want dn to equal dA divided by A delta k to the n. This way we can integrate both sides, going from no cycles up to the number of cycles till failure, and integrating from our initial crack size to some final crack size. By doing so, we're able to write this expression. The number of cycles until failure is equal to 1 over a y to the n, the change in the stress state raised to the n, pi raised to n over 2, right? This will all be multiplied by the integral starting from our initial crack length, going to our final crack length of dA divided by A to the n over 2. So you see what I've done is, first off, I recognized that that delta K is simply equal to Y delta sigma square root of pi times A. Therefore, the only thing in there that depends on a is just this a term. Everything else can come out of the integral because the integral is with respect to dA. So things that don't depend on a can come outside of the integral. Right? So let's go ahead and plug in some values for this. This is equal to 1 over 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10. This is 1 raised to 3.1 power. This is 125 megapascals minus 25 megapascals raised to the 3.1 power and then pi raised to the 3.1 power divided by 2. Right? 
And then inside the integral, it's just going to be a naught, which is our initial crack length, 0 0.01 millimeters is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative fifth meters. It's important that you use meters here in these questions. The crack growth constant is set up to assuming that you're using meters for your lengths of your crack. This is growing to some final crack length, which we don't know yet. dA divided by our initial crack length, a, or divided by a over um, 3.1 divided by 2. And this equals 350,000 cycles. So we can begin to simplify this. All of the terms out in front in the pre exponent in the pre uh, the, the coefficient in front of the integral is going to be equal to um, 594 0 0.94 uh, 0.491 excuse me. Then this will be multiplied by the integral. When we take that integral, it is equal to negative 1.8182 divided by our final crack length raised to the 0 0.55 power. This will be subtracting negative 1.8182 divided by our initial crack length, which was 1 times 10 to the negative fifth raised to the now 0 0.55. Again, this still equals 350,000. And now, uh, distributing this, this coefficient to both of these terms is equal to 607,831 minus 1080.9 divided by our final crack length raised to the 0 0.55 power equals 350,000. And now solving for our, our final crack length, it's equal to 4.755 times 10 to the negative fifth. Uh, that's in meters. So this here is crack length after the first round of cycles after first low stress round of cycles. And since we started at 1 times 10 to the negative fifth and it's now at 4.75, it's grown roughly, roughly five times in this, over this time period. Now we need to do the following. We know that eventually we're, we're going to need to set up a second uh, crack growth equation, but before we do so, let's figure out how big can the crack actually get before it's critical and will break. To do that, we'll use our K1C fracture toughness equation. K1C equals Y multiplied by the maximum stress, right? It's not going to break at a low stress. It's going to break at the highest stress as it's alternating between negative 250 and 250, so it's going to break at 250. This is multiplied by pi and multiplied by our critical crack length. So let's plug things in. The question tells us that it has a fracture toughness of 25 megapascal root meters um, equals 1 times 250 megapascals multiplied by the square root of pi times the critical crack length. So solving for our critical crack length is going to be equal to 25 megapascals root meters divided by 250 megapascals. This whole quantity gets squared and then divided by pi. When I plug in values for that, I find that the critical crack length, or the, the crack length when this thing is going to break, is equal to 3.183 millimeters, or 3.183 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. So when it gets that big, it's going to break. We're not there yet. We're only at 4.755 times 10 to the negative fifth meters from the first round of, of cycling. So we can go ahead and start our second round of cycling. We're going to write our crack equation just as before. The number of cycles until failure is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the negative 10 multiplied by 1 to the 3.1 power, which is just 1, multiplied now by 
250 megapascals raised to the 3.1 power and then multiplied by pi to the 3.1 divided by 2. So you notice that even though the, the stress cycle is going from negative 250 up to positive 250, this represents compression and this is tension. So when we solve for delta sigma, we only account for tension. We're making the assumption that the crack is only growing under tension. So we can ignore the negative 250 part of this. And we're just going from 0 to positive 250. And that's why we just leave the positive 250 here for our delta sigma. This is then, of course, multiplied by um, a final from before up into a critical. We're going to take dA and divide this by a to the 3.1 divided by 2. Right? So let's go ahead and continue plugging in some values. When I do so, I find that the this stuff out in front of the integral is equal to 34.716. This is now multiplied by the quantity of negative 1.8182 divided by 3.183 times 10 to the negative 3 raised to the 0 0.55. This is subtracting negative 1.8182 divided by our, um, what was it, 4.755 times 10 to the negative fifth raised to the 0 0.55 power. And when we plug all of this in, this is what we can use to solve for the number of uh, cycles until failure. And we find that n sub f, the number of cycles until failure, at this higher cycle rate, the higher stress cycle rate, is equal to 13,565 cycles.